and North Fanatics. Welcome. There's a show tonight. Get on board. How's everybody doing? Oh, yeah, it's a bright light. Everyone's doing good? You guys ready to see LCD? You guys ready to see uh, LSD? Yeah. Cool. Now, I'm actually going to do some jokes for everybody because uh, we all remember that long tradition in America of, of, of comedians opening for rappers. You know, that's the common, common tradition. goes back decades. You know, I remember when... I remember personally in the early 90s when Jerry Seinfeld used to open for NWA and, and Two Live Crew. It, my name is Ben Dietzel. Uh, which sounds just unfortunately close to uh, Vin Diesel. You know, when I was born, unlike Vin Diesel, I didn't come crashing out of my mom's vagina in a Camaro with a trunk full of drugs. So I don't really have that much in common with him. You know, uh, unlike, Vin, unlike Vin Diesel, I'm not allergic to sleeves. I can wear them all the time. My arms don't just break through them. And me and Vin have uh, not a lot in common. Also, uh, unlike Vin Diesel, my best friend is still alive. Is that too soon? Yeah, yeah, that's true. I shouldn't have said that, yeah. I shouldn't have said that. Yeah. It's been, it's been long enough. I think it's been, it's been long enough. Guys, let's, let's, let's get past it. Um, <laughs> un unfortunately, the only celebrity I bear any resemblance to is I clearly built a laser in my attic and shrunk my children. So I've got, I've got that going for me. Uh, Rick Moranis. I am Rick Moranis, everyone. You remember me and Ghostbusters and had a lot of fun. I've been in hiding for a while. Uh, I just came back, to, <laughs> I came back to open at a rap show, of course. That's what Rick Moranis has been doing all these years, is preparing to open for a hip-hop show. But uh, unlike Rick Moranis, I'm not even, I'm not Canadian, you know? Uh, I'm, I'm not Canadian, I've never been to Canada, I've never had poutine. Um, uh, you know, Cana Canadians, the national haircut's the mullet, I've never had a mullet at any point. Although, uh, weirdly enough, I do like to keep my pubes real short in the front, and then I have like foot-long ass hair just wagging behind me. It's kind of weird, it's, it's really, it's, it's disgusting. Yeah, I don't have I don't have dingleberries. I have dingle bananas. I don't know. I don't know why they're yellow. What's whatever? <laughs> what the fuck, indeed? It's true. You're right. You're right. That guy knows. I like Tucson because uh, you see things here in, in Tucson, living here that you don't see other places. Like um, if if you're ever leaving. You know, any like grocery store or something at like seven or eight o'clock at night, there's a nice Mexican lady outside who's gonna sell you some tamales out of a shopping cart. I think that's a nice thing, you know? Yeah. You know, you go to uh, certain restaurants, there's a nice mariachi band that'll serenade you and your girlfriend for a couple bucks. It's pretty good. Because uh, white people couldn't get away with that. Like, if, if I'm walking out of a store at eight or nine o'clock at night and I'm ambushed by someone who looks like they could be my mother trying to sell me Dixie cups full of green bean casserole. I'm pushing that shopping cart right out in the speedway. <laughs> Stay the fuck out of the Bookman's parking lot, bitch. This is Rosarita's territory. She runs this. She got her own cart. Stay the fuck out. You know, a lot of people ride their bikes in Tucson. So you see a lot of people uh, who like look like they stole the old clothes Lance Armstrong just threw away in his dumpster. Uh, you know, real tight shorts that show whether or not you've been circumcised, that kind of stuff. You know, I see all those guys riding bikes around town, but like half of them are just super fat. They're just real fat bicyclists. They're riding their bikes all day, but apparently that, that little thermos they keep down on the bottom of their bike frame is just full of Hefeweizens. They're just slamming wheat beer as they're riding their bike around town. Like apparently El Tour de Tucson just routes itself right through a Dairy Queen drive through and you just chuck a blizzard on your head when you get hot. Oh, they shouldn't be that fat. They shouldn't be. I, I, noticed, I noticed some other things driving around Tucson. Like if you ever uh, drive down Speedway Boulevard uh, on a Friday evening, you'll notice that TD's is having their fish fry. As, you know, as, as, a, as good Christians, they're having their fish fry on Friday. You know, just in case a visiting priest from the Vatican is in from out of town, can't have beef on a Friday, but, you know, might like some, some fried cod and a face full of Teen Mom rejected tits. Who 
Who wouldn't? You're right. You're right. It's 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 beef on Friday's a sin, but uh, checking out those gams on a on a girl with uh, track marks. That's cool. <laughs> but what I like the most about TDs having a fish fry is they're covering up the smell of fish with the smell of fish. <laughs> it's genius. It's goddamn genius. They know what they're doing. They don't have to hire a janitor that day. Mm. Oh, boy. I remember growing up uh, before I was in high school, seeing lots of high school movies and uh, acquiring many, many false hopes for my future. Um, and one of them was that uh, in high school, apparently, according to Hollywood, all you had to do to get a girl to like you was to just tell her how you feel. That doesn't work, because I don't know if anyone... I don't know if anyone here has ever been a 15-year-old male, but none of those thoughts that you have as a 15-year-old male should ever be said out loud, <laughs> much, less, much less to a girl who doesn't yet know what you do with all of your spare time, which is just constant masturbating. Do not tell a girl how you feel when you just discover what this thing does. So if, if that... If, so you know, when high school rolls around and you, you put that strategy to work, you're just like, oh, oh, hey, hey, hey. Hey, Rebecca, um, do you want to come over to my house after school and watch me play Mortal Kombat 3 so my dad stops calling me gay? <laughs> That's how I feel about you. you know, hey, 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 Christina, hey, 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 uh, I think it's great how your hair smells just like my mom's. Do you use the same shampoo? Oh, oh. Can I finger you? Ah, oh, shit, I shouldn't have said that. Shouldn't have said that. I'm sorry. Hey, hey. Hey, uh, hey, hey, Bernice, uh, do you want to go to the prom with me? I mean, I know you drive the bus, but you're the only girl that talks to me. <laughs> uh. I recently discovered, um, after some, some slight math, uh, that I'm roughly, I'm roughly 12 boners tall. <laughs> 12 of my own boner, not someone else's. Don't measure your height with someone else's boner. It's your own, otherwise that gets weird. Those marks on the kitchen wall get a whole new meaning to them. Uh, but you, you know, like I measure myself with my own boner. So like, for example, if you measured other people with their own boner, Tommy Lee, uh, the drummer for Motley Crue, he's four boners tall. <laughs> Yao Ming is 88 boners tall. That's not an Asian joke. That's a tall joke. He's really tall. He's like two stories tall, at least. He's at least that tall. Uh, Rosie O'Donnell, 20 boners tall. She is. She is. But only eight boners wide. She's very girthy. She has a fat dick. Fat Dick Rosie was her nickname in high school. Rin Tin Tin, 19 red rockets from tail to nose. That's right. So speaking of wieners, um, I, I have... In my past, I've often been fortunate enough to date a gal who's willing to perform fellatio on me. Um, but that, that, the, the term perform fellatio is weird, like, because I guess if it's a performance, it should happen more often in like a theater setting. There should be like an intermission. Uh, there should be an usher to clean up after me, you know, when we're done, maybe some popcorn. Has anyone here ever been to jail? Yeah, I spent the night there once. Um, just one time. Never again. But we always make the same joke to guys when, when, when we f they go to jail. It's like, oh, hey, while well, you're in there, don't drop the soap. Yep, drop the soap. This guy knows. This guy's maybe dropped some soap. I don't know. Um, but it's, it's always that same joke. And, and it's weird that we're so cool with making that joke to guys because, I mean, you know, rape's not cool. Even if it's a guy doing it to a guy in a shower, it's not cool. Because, um, like... You'd never, you'd never make that same joke to a woman and be like, oh, you're going to a frat party tomorrow. Well, don't let them know you're a female. <laughs> That's not cool. But we still make that same old don't drop the soap joke. Because it's, it's, I guess it's true, you know. But, but I got to believe that like 95% of the time when soap gets dropped in a prison shower, probably nothing happens. You know, no one's paying attention, you know. And even if you do, by the time you see the guy coming up all the way from picking up the soap, you're still soft. You can't just work up that boner in two or three seconds. Get over there, slide it behind him, you know? Unless you're just like some weirdo in the prison shower who's always erect, just staring. Head on a swivel like an owl. Or also, let's also, if you're going to pick the soap up, 
you know, just bend to the knees. <laughs> At best, you get a dick in the air. That's not too bad. That's not too bad. Or, I mean, even, even if you're going to stand up straight, just do it like a golfer and throw your leg out behind you to protect yourself. <laughs> Has anyone ever noticed how whenever we meet someone from a foreign country, we always just tell them that we like something from their country just for no reason? Like, oh, hey, you're from, you're from Canada. I love maple syrup. <laughs> hey, hey, you're from Australia. I, I love the Bloomin' Onion at Outback. <laughs> like, we just say some arbitrary weird thing to like try to relate to them, you know? Like, oh, hey, you're from England. I hate going to the dentist too. <laughs> now, why do we do that? What if they did that to us? What if they came here and like, oh, hey, you're American. It's great that you gave those retarded girls on E a, a show. Those, those Kardashians, they really in a tough break, you know, with a mental illness. You gave them a show. Why am I making fun of them? I don't know, I guess they deserve it. I'm finally old enough to admit, and this, this will not be a popular thing I'm about to say, people, but I'm not a huge fan of, of dogs anymore. Bear with me. It's because when you're a kid, dogs are great. You don't have to clean up after them. You don't have to pay for your food. You don't have to pay for the dog's food. You don't even have to walk the dog. You don't have to, you aren't there with a, you know, with a bottle of Febreze trying to, trying to get the smell of dog shit out of a futon mattress. That's your parents. You know, and then you grow up and you're the one who has to actually take care of the dog, and then you get a little tired of it, you know, like, because I don't know if anyone else has noticed this, but if you don't pick up your dog shit now, like, it's like, that's like a huge deal. People hate you if you don't pick up your dog's shit on a walk. They look at you like you just pushed a pregnant woman over a park bench if you don't pick up after your dog. And I'm just, I'm, I'm just, I'm not going to put myself in that situation anymore. You know, and, and don't feel bad for dogs, because... Dogs are super happy all the time. Have you ever seen a dog in a car? It's having the best time ever. That would be, every time a dog drives in a car, that's like, they're having a better time than, it's, than if you were to lose your virginity on a roller coaster to, to Sofia Vergara while on acid drinking, drinking white Russians from her breasts. Dogs are having a better time than that every time they're in a car. So don't feel, don't feel bad for them. They're, they're doing all right. Uh, I remember growing up watching TV shows where you'd always see uh, that assignment that two kids would get where a boy and a girl would be partnered up and they'd have to take care of an egg for a week to simulate parenting. And I guess it's that easy. I don't know. I've never had a kid. Probably. It's probably that easy. Um, but the thing is, like, I always, I always wanted to get that assignment in, in high school because I would have just taken the egg up to the teacher's desk, set it down, and smashed it. And then just, just said, uh, yeah, me and my partner, we're pro-choice. We'll take our A now. I'll see you in detention. Because it's true, if, if that egg survives the week, you should fail, because you're not old enough to be an, a parent yet. You know, you had Gatorade and a Hershey bar for lunch. You have no business taking care of a human yet. I want to run all of the ladies through a little ritual that most guys go through every morning, and that's what it's like to pee with a boner. <laughs> it's a thing every guy has to deal with at some point, and, and frankly, most of the time. And uh, see, the way it works is, you know, you wake up in the morning, you come in, you know, you're, you're, you're fully upright, and you know, just based on experience, that if you try to pee with a boner, it goes in all directions when it first comes out. And if you, if you ejaculated recently for whatever reason, whether you watched Boy Meets World on TV, it doesn't matter. doesn't matter your reason. That pee will travel through time. It's so unpredictable. So you go into the bathroom. You're groggy. You're, you're upright. You're, you're bonered. And, you know, you try to sit down in the toilet regularly, and you, like, you try to push down in the front, but there's, like, a streak mark on the front because someone doesn't know how to shit right. So you got to, like, approach it backwards like you're a cool waiter at Applebee's. Hey, mozzarella sticks are half price for the next two hours. What's up? That doesn't work. You know, and then when you're still a kid, when you're still a young kid, you can lay flat, do the little Superman thing, pee with a boner in the toilet. But then you get older and, and, you, and, you, and it dips in the water. You don't, you don't want that. And then, uh, then your mom makes you coffee. This has been a lot of fun, everybody, but are you guys ready to see a show? Yeah! yeah. In North Fanatics. <laughs>